threw their calculations out of gear. Hence the ultimate result was. That serious analysis suffered a double discrediting, the first, prior to the crash, due to the persistence of imaginary values, and the second, after the crash, due to the disappearance of real values. The experiences of 1927 to 1933 were of so extraordinary a character that they scarcely provide a valid criterion for judging the usefulness of security analysis. As to the years since 1933, there is perhaps room for a difference of opinion. In the field of bonds and preferred stocks, we believe that sound principles of selection and rejection have justified themselves quite well. In the common stock arena the partialities of the market have tended to confound the conservative viewpoint, and conversely.